channels its 345 brake horsepower through a clever new four-wheel drive system and has an adaptive suspension system as standard. Another all-wheel drive contender, and as well as a monstrously powerful five-cylinder engine, the RS3 also packs a classy interior and a prestige badge. The BMW's 3-litre engine is the only one in this test with six cylinders rather than four. It's also our only rear-drive contender. Another legendary figure in the hot hatch fraternity, the Type R has always dazzled with its handling, if not always, its raw power. To rectify that, the latest version has upwards of 300 brake horsepower. According to the stats, the A45 has a head start on the rest of the field because it has the most power and the fastest claimed acceleration. Ridiculous name, and in this company, the Peugeot has a ridiculously small 1.6 litre engine. Yet with a barely believable 266 brake horsepower, this thing is still stupidly quick. One of our oldest contenders, but also one of the most dazzling track day hot hatches of recent years. Importantly, the Cup S also has a package of suspension and exhaust upgrades. The Cupra's been around for a little while as well, but Seat has just upgraded its 2.0-litre engine to deliver 286 brake horsepower. Admittedly not exactly a hot hatchback, but this rallying legend appeals to the same buyers and simply has to be included in any comparison test that features small performance cars. For when a Golf GTI simply isn't enough. The R takes the legendary GTI's 217 brake horsepower, cranks it up to a whopping 296 brake horsepower, and throws in four-wheel drive for good measure. Ridiculous power and torque means this Ford is fast enough to take on all comers. But it's the trick four-wheel drive system that really makes it feel special. It powers you out of tight corners, but it's pretty frisky if you feel like mucking about too. This car makes a truly brilliant noise and it is undeniably bonkers fast, but it just feels stupidly nose heavy, it's actually more prone to understeer than a lot of our front wheel drive cars and the steering, well, it's just pretty much lifeless. Man, I've got to be honest, it's disappointing. The best thing about this 135i is the creamy turbocharged straight six petrol engine which doesn't feel turbocharged you've got this wonderfully linear power delivery and an almighty mid-range which i admit doesn't feel very hot hatchy the steering's a bit vague for this rear wheel driver and whereas most of the cars here like being driven quite aggressively to get the most out of the bmw actually requires smoother more consistent more precise inputs Kind of like you're perfecting your golf swing. The Civic Type R is a really, really angry car. Its engine punches almost as hard as the Focus RS. It fizzes and growls at you all the time and you have to wrestle with the steering wheel to keep it straight sometimes, but it's got the sweetest manual gearbox. It is hard to believe that an engine this powerful and that sounds this good is only a four-cylinder. It is nothing short of phenomenal. And so is the way that this car hangs onto the road around the corners and the way it puts its power down on the way out. It is super impressive. GTI may only have a turbocharged 1.6 litre petrol engine, but it isn't short of fizz and verve and is hugely entertaining. The trouble is, in this company, it actually feels the least grippy here. You're constantly having to mediate the throttle to ensure that you're maintaining maximum traction and you're not torque steering all over the place. And the gear change just doesn't have the mechanical definition of the Civic Type R. The Megane 
Express feels perfectly at home here on track. It's got the sweetest chassis, razor sharp steering, and it's light too. It feels like it's got a real motorsport pedigree. The layout really is the surprise package in this test. It is a very easy car to drive seriously quickly because of all the confidence you get from all the controls. Also, there is real polish in the way that this car turns and stops and goes. It is no shortage of fun, let me tell you. This Subaru feels like such a nod to those good old days of, of rally specials. I think I drove one of these for the first time about 10 years ago and this thing just doesn't feel any different. And while that will be quite romantic and appealing for, for the hardcore few, I've got a feeling for the majority of people this thing's going to feel pretty dated with a cabin that's noisy, a turbo that's laggy and a ride quality that's pretty firm and bouncy. You really can have your cake and eat it with this Golf R. It's as easy to drive and refined as any Golf you'll find, but it comes alive when driven hard, with brilliant traction and composure out of corners, and an engine that's super smooth and a joy to rev out. We know how you lot love to pour over the stats, to compare and contrast all the numbers in all their minute detail. So if you want to see a table of all our performance figures, then hit your pause button right about now. Happy? Good. Okay, chaps, so 